Good morning, everyone. Now I can hear myself. Uh, I'm Sweet T. I work at uh, Meta. I still haven't recovered from the name change, which is why Facebook is still on my slide template. Sorry about that. Um, before I worked at Meta for the past year and a half on ButterFS uh, stuff, um, I worked at Red Hat on a device mapper target. So I've seen encryption in the kernel in different areas. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the work I've been doing for much of the time I've been at Meta, encryption for file systems with advanced features. Uh, so I want to uh, go over first off what FSCrypt is and does and why we care about uh, integrating it into file systems with advanced features. Um, the extent-based FSCrypt that uh, we've been working to get upstream over the past two years, um, then some of the details and the history of how we got to where we are now, and then some of the future goals, which include getting FSCrypt into more file systems all the time. Uh, um, so first of all, I want to apologize. I'm not a cryptographer, so please don't judge my cryptography too badly. The glorious thing about FSCrypt is that it uh, uses the kernel crypto layer, and people much smarter than me have already dealt with that part. So I, as a file system person, don't need to know very much about crypto. Uh, I also don't want to be judgmental about what an advanced file system is. Ext, ext2 is a perfectly decent file system. Um, the file systems that currently use FSCrypt are also glorious file systems. It's just a convenient way to refer to file systems that have ref links or subvolumes or snapshots or checksums and things like that, um, which, well, this is probably not an exhaustive list. I would claim that ButterFS and XFS and eCacheFS, I suppose, um, all count. Uh, as having the features that would make me call them advanced file systems. Um, I put an asterisk on eCacheFS because it has its own thing. Um, and I'll talk about that more at the end. Uh, so how many of y'all uh, here in the room have used FSCrypt, have developed with FSCrypt, have even heard of FSCrypt? Okay, so about half of y'all. Uh, so I'll run through it uh, quickly to provide a general uh, summary of it, uh, especially for the folks uh, remotely who I can't see the hands of. Um, basically, it's a kernel library providing standard encryption features to file systems which choose to call the FSCrypt hooks and the FSCrypt functions at appropriate places. Uh, my impression is that it was developed for and is used widely on Android, although I don't develop on Android, so I don't know personally. Um, currently, it's integrated into several different file systems. X4 was where it began, F2FS, Ceph, UBFS. Uh, currently, Ceph was just a year or so ago, I believe, um, which was pretty exciting. Really, only, only a couple months ago. <laughs> I've, I've seen patch sets for a very long time. Uh, so very cool. Um, the fundamental idea of FSCrypt uh, is that it integrates your encryption into the file system layer. So the idea is you have one master key per directory tree, uh, but you can set encryption up on different directory trees as long as they don't overlap. Uh, you can have some unencrypted base directory and then have various encrypted directories within it, all of which have their own separate keys but you can't mix keys within a single tree. So you can't say, oh, I've got this encrypted tree. Let me change the key of this new folder within there and have a different key of this subtree. Um, another key feature of FSCrypt from the user's point of view uh, is that you can delete files if you lose your key still. So you don't have to reformat uh, like you would with a whole file system encryption solution. Um, when we were thinking about it for ButterFS, we contemplated the notion of encrypting everything, the file metadata, the, the uh, file system metadata, everything with a single key. But the problem with that is that if you lose that key, you then cannot ever delete those files. You never get that space back in the best case. Uh, and 
that's a trade-off that isn't acceptable for many folks. Now, the one biggest trade-off of using FScript is that it does not encrypt everything, as I, I just referred to. Um, it only encrypts the file names and the file data. If you use a block device-based solution like Lux with Deencrypt and so forth, that encrypts everything, which fits a different threat model. Um, some people believe that file metadata is sensitive. Some people don't believe it's sensitive. It depends on your threat model. Um, there's nothing stopping you from using both of them, although it seems a bit redundant to use both uh, a file system with FScript and also a device mapper target with encryption also. Um, FScript has been, uh, uses one of two different backends. It can do, uh, it can use the standard uh, crypto API or it can use the uh, block layer uh, crypto. Um, with block crypto, it's really elegant. The file system never sees encrypted data, which is beautiful. Um, and technically, uh, the encryption information is stored uh, within uh, on a per file basis. Um, it gets loaded off disk by the file system and provided to FScript, which hooks uh, it into its uh, inode info with instruct inode. Um, when the file system then goes to write file data, it needs to call an appropriate encryption or decryption function, depending on IO direction. Um, it retrieves the encryption info out of the inode and encrypts it based on the file and the file offset. Um, there are various ways of deriving the key. From the user's point of view, it's not very important. It's gloriously abstracted away from file system developers, which makes me happy. Um, however, these, this, this way works very well for many file systems, but with the advent of reflinks, things get a little more complicated. Subvolumes get a bit complicated. Uh, and block crypto is a very elegant way of keeping the file system from ever having to deal with encrypted data itself, but it can be awkward for checksumming. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, FScript doesn't allow you to have different keys within the same tree. This becomes very awkward if you have a subvolume inside of another subvolume. Um, I mentioned the elegance of block crypto, uh, but it's unsafe to store checksums of plain text along with your encrypted data um, for probably obvious reasons. Uh, you could just, uh, um, and most of all, reflink becomes extremely awkward since you could have one piece of data reflinked in two different files with two different inode infos at two different file offsets, trying to make those work in the existing FScript model is rather awkward. Um, so when we looked into hooking it up for ButterFS, um, we realized that we would need to uh, expand FScript uh, to be able to do more things in FS, uh, to do more things. Um, we've been talking about encryption for probably 10 years now, um, but reflinking and checksumming are very important to ButterFS, uh, so we didn't want to give that up. Um, it's very exciting to allow ButterFS to do encryption on a per subvolume basis, because then you can have a bunch of different users, all of which have different keys, none of which can read each other's data when each other aren't logged in. Um, there are other uh, interesting, uh, unlike with the block device-based solution, it's very easy to add more storage to your ButterFS file system and choose later on whether you need to, uh, exp uh, whether uh, you want to use that new storage as encrypted or unencrypted. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more, it, it's a different trade-off than with Lux. Um, so uh, the idea is just that instead of just having that inode encryption information, we also stick some encryption information on a per extent basis. Um, I assume that everybody is familiar with the notion of a file system extent. Um, but uh, with extent-based FScript, uh, we encrypt the data based on 
the extent plus the offset within the extent of the data instead of going off of the inode. Suddenly, we don't have issues with reflink anymore. It's great. Um, and we can also store the key that we use to encrypt within each extent, which opens up a, a vast uh, possibilities of having a bunch of different keys. Maybe you want to be super paranoid, and maybe you want to give each system the service its own encrypted subvolume and delete everything afterward. Terrible for logging, but maybe you're paranoid enough to do that. Obviously, though, for file systems, they usually have quite a few more extents than inodes, so it does take up more metadata space. Um, some work that uh, uh, one of my colleagues did indicated that on a representative file system, at least within ButterFS, you have about four and a half extents for the average inode. Um, so it ends up being quite a bit more metadata than just storing 50-ish uh, bytes per inode. But on the other hand, it's still a very small structure, um, very affordable. Um, so we started working on this back in October of 21. Um, Omar Sandoval uh, started the work. Uh, one of the things that I think was really great was that we sent out design documents uh, with each design before actually uh, reducing it fully to code and patch sets. Um, this allowed various community members who might not be technically uh, able to review the patch sets to be able to review the design and comment on the suitability of it. So I think that was a really uh, good thing that we did. However, some of the difficulties with having design documents are that folks really want to see code. Uh, and so there can be a mismatch of expectations there. Um, and you can get several months into it and then the code turn for a particular design turns out not to be safe or not to uh, be quite as glorious as you were hoping it to be. Um, we redesigned it in November. Um, I inherited the project from Omar um, in March -ish of 22, uh, sent out patches for it, redesigned it in November. Um, FSCrypt is hoping to mostly aim toward using the block crypto interface in the far future. Um, so we implemented extent-based encryption just for the block crypto side of FSCrypt. Um, it's just a compile time option. It's not particularly onerous. Um, however, I was overly committed to elegance and wanted to do away with inode contexts entirely and just have extent contexts, which is elegant, but not optimal. It used extra space and um, so we ended up uh, throwing out that also. We've got a third design going on now, uh, being spearheaded by Joseph, uh, who is doing glorious things with it. It's a lot smaller. Um, it doesn't yet support nested subvolumes. It's just the bare bones that we need for ButterFS. Um, but it has the information stored on disk so that you can uh, so that we can one day expand if we need to uh, have nested encrypted subvolumes with different keys. Um, we added a callback to block crypto in this patch set, uh, which checksums encrypted data since you really don't want to checksum unencrypted data. Um, currently, it uses the block crypto fallback stuff, which is not as widely used as block crypto proper. Um, so there's a little bit of risk there of unexpected things. Um, there's a link to a patch set here. It was definitely hoped that we would have it in by now, but it's not in yet. So please go review it. Um, it should be extendable to other file systems pretty easily. Um, it still doesn't allow changing keys within a single tree, but we can add that very easily in the future. Um, we do require the use of block crypto, but as mentioned, FSCrypt is, use, is moving toward using block crypto altogether. The callback part, uh, the callback addition to block crypto is a little bit uh, awkward, uh, and uh, we'll get to that later. Um, 
and it makes encryption uh, work for reflinks, and it's really glorious. Um, one day we might even be able to have reflinks between inodes that are using different keys because the extent can use the same key for both of them. Um, why you would want this? Maybe a good question. I haven't actually come up with a good use case for this, but I, I want uh, the possibility to be there. Um, obviously, we're trying to get a minimal uh, patch set in that addresses all of our essential needs, um, but we've got uh, several future goals because, as mentioned, there are a bunch of alternatives to using ButterFS with FScript or using uh, any of the other file systems using FScript. Um, one of the hottest topics of the moment is bcachefs, which does things absolutely differently. Um, it doesn't use FScript. It encrypts the entire file system with only one encryption key, which has different trade-offs, as mentioned. It doesn't fulfill our desires to have her subvolume keys. It does have subvolumes, but you can't set a different key for each subvolume. Um, you can't delete anything without, uh, if you lose the key, you have to reformat. Um, it also, in a really cool innovation, it uses authenticated encryption um, instead of encryption plus checksums. Basically, the idea here is that instead of taking a checksum and then decrypting, um, the encryption and the checksum are key dependent and happen at the same time. Um, so this is... Uh, cryptographically more secure and uh, excellent. Um, I'm not a cryptographer, so I can't tell you too much more than that. I'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, and bcachefs currently, as far as I understand, it has a single choice for encryption algorithm. So there are interesting questions about many people have different requirements. Uh, my understanding is that some countries require uh, you to use a particular crypto algorithm for various reasons. If that were the case in your country, then the CacheFS would not currently work for you. Um, I also mentioned that DMCrypt plus DM Integrity are the most common solution for encryption. Um, it presents itself as a software-defined block device. So there's, again, only one encryption key per file system, assuming that you're, you partition with LVM and do Lux on top of that. Um, again, no access to anything even for deletion when the key isn't loaded. Um, again, it has the option of using authenticated encryption. Um, it also has the possibility of changing your encryption key, which I think is a very important feature uh, for the future. Uh, sometimes you need to change your encryption key because somebody stole it, um, or you need to change to a newer encryption algorithm, uh, and Lux has the possibility of re-encrypting your data, um, which is cool. Um, so my aspirations are to bring FScript up to, uh, to add these features to FScript within the realm of feasibility. Uh, obviously, I don't want to have whole disk encryption uh, for the reasons elaborated, but being able to ch ch uh, change the key of your data is pretty cool. Um, but our FS, uh, sorry, Fedora has been has a proposal to possibly use ButterFS encryption um, in a multi-step uh, encryption process where uh, each individual uh, contributor to the final laptop image uh, has their own key and, and re-encrypts the stuff that the previous layer in the stack uh, encrypted with its own key. Um, so that's a possible use case there. Uh, Meta once and might again in the future want to install a package in a subvolume, and then have every give that subvolume a key, have everything written by that package in that subvolume be encrypted, um, so that when you, we shut it down, we can easily securely delete whatever that package ended up writing. Um, we have other solutions for this. Um, as I said, they, we once wanted to do this. We found a different solution for now. We might one day want to do it in the future. Um, We'll see. Um, however, there's interesting questions about how to implement changing the encryption key on, uh, for a subvolume that already has encrypted data. Um, one way we could do it is to have 
uh, uh, on a per sub volume basis have the key that's inherited by new extents for new data being written. Um, and then when you write new data to your ButterFS subvolume, you look up the subvolume, grab the key, and use that for your new writes. This means you would have multiple keys potentially being used within a single subvolume, which is a bit awkward. Then you have to load all of the keys for the subvolume to be guaranteed to be able to read everything in that subvolume. There's also questions of whether you do this on the fly, online, or whether you need to do this offline or something else. Um, you could alternately have a per subvolume key and have kernel space recursively update as inodes are accessed and re-encrypt. Um, you could have user space recursively re-encrypt things. Interfaces are hard if anybody has comments on how key changing should work or would be most effective for your file system that doesn't currently use FS script. That would be really cool. Um, also, as mentioned, authenticated encryption is uh, available from eCacheFS and from Lux. Um, authenticated encryption uh, detects corruption in a cryptographically clever way and means you get EIO instead of some sort of corrupt data, um, which uh, is helpful. Uh, historically, FSCrypt hasn't had it because it requires storing an authentication tag on a per block basis, and many file systems don't have the space to store basically a checksum per block. Uh, ButterFS obviously already has checksums, um, so a long-term goal is to uh, store uh, the authentication tag and the nots used per write in the place that we currently store checksums if you choose to use authenticated encryption. Um, DM Integrity does magic with Device Mapper to store the, uh, the authentication tags, um, but they do it in their own DM side of the world. It's not in uh, Block Crypto at present. Um, so it might be interesting to pull some of that uh, uh, to, to make FSCrypt use Block Crypto to do authenticated encryption and then return the authentication tag back through the file system in some fashion instead of having a callback to do check something of the encrypted data as we as the cache set currently has it has exciting applications for butterfs scrub and relocate and no cal files if you need to have the key in order to read the data and generate the correct authentication tag that becomes a bit awkward and you have to end up leaving your data in place if you don't have the key. Um, but uh, regardless, it would presumably be an option not required to use authenticated encryption. Um, and uh, once it's in, hopefully, that will become an exciting option for ButterFS. And my chief goal, of course, uh, after some version of the extent-based uh, FSCrypt patch set is actually landed upstream is to help other file systems adopt encryption. Um, so I'm very interested in hearing what, what keeps your file system from using FSCrypt and how I can enable folks to uh, integrate it into their file system. <coughs> um, so with that, I'll open it up for questions and thoughts about rolling keys, block crypto, authenticated encryption, your file systems challenge with FSCrypt, anything like that. So you mentioned uh, changing keys. My, my understanding, at least with FSCrypt from my work with it, was that you really don't have the option to do that other than to copy data, right? You know, essentially what you need to do is create and copy your data from one to the other. Um, I don't. I don't know if there's a, a way around that, really. So, one way that I could, you know, I mean, yes, you you do eventually need to do that if you want to use the new key. Yeah. Um, if you could have multiple keys uh, in a particular directory tree at present, then you could say all new writes are being encrypted with the new key, and everything you used to write is using the old key. Um, 
you could have a background job that attempts to re-encrypt things to the new key, et cetera. Um, is it a thing that Seth is interested in? I'm sure they are probably. I'm, I'm not really working on Seth these days. So. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, being able to change keys is kind of a, is a nice thing. Uh, I don't know that they're going to want to move to the extent-based thing, though, because uh, the storage requirements are pretty onerous, you know, for some. I mean, you, you know, you, you have your question up here, what keeps your file system from using FS Crypt? And I started looking at it for NFS, too. But the, the big problem we had with Seth uh, was the, um, is tracking links. So, uh, the, you know, the server is mostly a client. Lock, as far as the server is concerned, right? But the actual file. Difficult, actually, is that that was that was one of the big big hurdles. So that's say I'd say that you know if you want to look at uh, you know have, you need to be able to track two different links uh, if you're working in a network file system. And I really think FS Crypt is probably most compelling in network file system case because. You know, one of the things we always want to be able to do is here's a big chunk of data. You guys go have fun over here, right? And being able to encrypt, you know, a, a subtree of that is, is a very powerful feature. Well, I'll be the daring one and say something. <laughs> so um, as, as you mentioned about the changing keys thing, um, I, I I may maybe you covered this earlier while I wasn't here because I got dragged into another conversation. But um, what are your thoughts about handling like when you have to do cryptographic upgrades and stuff like that? Because that's like the big concern I've had across all these different encryption systems has been cryptographic upgrades aren't really supported, and that scares the bejesus out of me because. Uh, you know, every once in a while, somebody says, you know, this this algorithm is close to being broken. Oh, this algorithm is now broken. You can't use this anymore. But then, you know, you've got this added complexity of um, your data is basically stuck. And if you and and you can't really do anything about it and you don't have space to do the whole whoosh, you got to move everything over and then whoosh, move it back. So what are your thoughts about solving that particular pain point? Because I think that's a pretty universal one with how disk encryption has generally worked in Linux? I think that's basically the same problem as changing keys. Mm -hmm. So whatever solution works for changing keys can probably be relatively trivially adapted to change crypto algorithm altogether. Yeah. Probably not from non-authenticated to authenticated, though. Uh, yeah, the, the reason I was kind of worried about this is because like some of the different systems and mechanisms, like over the years that I've used some of them, have been kind of picky and choosy about which ways they want to do it. And sometimes they've been not so smart about how they've encoded what your cryptographic choices are in into these um, uh, into this into the store into the data. And like these are the sort of things that it's just like now that you got you're introducing encryption to a new thing using a new subsystem with a new set way of doing it have you thought about like you know how to handle this case because it would be nice to not repeat this mistake again like again <laughs> so like at least for fs crypt the nice thing is like the downside is the upside the downside is that we store all of this bullshit with everything which which means that we we know the policy that's currently in use so it's a matter of changing the policy and the metadata and so that's the tricky part and like you know which is why right now the fs crypt answer is just copy the like create a new directory set the policy and whatever on that you want and then copy all of your data into there and delete the old one mm -hmm. right ButterFS has the ability to do this sort of in place because we're doing it on the extent state. So like, again, the overhead sucks, but the nice thing is the overhead allows us to essentially have multiple policies per inode. Now, if it, right, we can't do that right now. We don't like, I mean, we can't like, 
but that's a software thing. It's not a a metadata disk format change. It'll be a thing that like, okay, we've decided how this is how we want to make it look. We just decided this is how we're going to do it safely. And then ButterFS already has the ability to like, you know, with defrag or whatever, rewrite stuff. So thankfully, the formats and everything makes this future proof that like, if okay, we've decided that this policy is bad, we want a new policy, then it's just a matter of hooking up and coming to an agreement amongst FS Crypt and everybody else. It's like, okay, we agree that this is safe. It's okay to do this, and now we can go do it. But like, as far as like future proofing it, we're pretty future proof, right? <laughs> Anybody have any more thoughts about FS Script? Oh, we've got. Uh, it's... I have a question that's maybe for maybe for Jeff. I was curious. Uh, one thing I ran into when when I first started this was that uh, um, the FS Script user user space tooling assumed like certain things about devices existing, which I, d isn't the case for like a network file system like Ceph. And ButterFS has its own weird device numbering thing, so. Uh, did you guys fix the user space tooling to handle that, or do you not at all? No, no. Okay. <laughs> just, just, uh, just dealt with having this. Uh, you know, there's a dot directory that it creates at the root of the file system, sort uh -huh. of the, where all the keys go, right? You know, and uh, and I we just kind of worked with that. Um, I mean, kind of the user space tooling for Ceph. So, so the you know um, the the Ceph team is really interested in doing this for most of the cloud providers, right? You know, it's what they really want, and so they. Uh, are looking at probably reworking some of the user space tooling and integrating it maybe into Kubernetes or something like that. So where they would have, uh, you know, where your your orchestration tool would sort of go and set the keys for you for the, for this particular application that you're going to run under FS Script on, on the thing. Okay. Yeah, so that might be another thing that like advanced file systems or just anything that's not block, single block device based might run into. As yeah, a yeah. And I mean, this I think this is all still very much up in the air, actually. They're not quite sure how they want to do this yet. So looking at it. I mean, this is kind of where, like, I'm really, my hat is off to biggers, right? Like, okay, so, like, the tooling and stuff kind of, like, is a little silly and, like, it's assumptions or whatever. But, like, at the end of the day, he, like, provided all of the interfaces to do this. So, like, yes, okay, that's how it looks currently. But there's nothing to keep us from doing whatever we want with the ioctals. You know, the, the stuff is fairly low level. Um, and so, you know, it's all driven by IO cuddles that you just drive into the file system, right? You know, so, if you, you know, you can use that to set keys however you like. It, we're not necessarily tied to this sort of uh, the way he manages keys in the FS script tool. Yeah, so. It's a very elegant system. Very elegant. Anybody <laughs> has more things, then I guess we could break for lunch early and maybe get to see that restaurant this time. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming.